Let's work through another example, and I'm going to work through it in Dr. Racket so you see how all of the code is developed from scratch. In this example, let's suppose that we're working with GUIs. We need to represent GUIs that have some label, like pick a fruit, on some items. Some items are choice lists, like apple, banana, and coconut. And uh, some items are buttons, like OK and cancel, where the buttons can either be disabled, like OK here, or enabled, like cancel. And when we represent these GUIs, we can write programs that answer questions like, can you currently click a button with a particular label, like OK? Uh, is there some button or some item in the GUI that has a particular label? Or, please read off all of the text that exists in the GUI, uh, like for a screen reader. No matter which of these programs that we are writing in the end, we need to represent the same kind of GUI. So let's do our first step of the design recipe, our data analysis. We've seen that we have three kinds of things in the GUI. We have these labels, we have item lists, we have buttons. In the case of a label, what we're going to care about for the kinds of programs we enumerated was just the text of the label string. In the case of buttons, it's got some label on it, and also it's enabled or disabled, so an enabled state. And in the case of lists, we have a list of text. We have apple, banana, and coconut, or any number of things that are in the list. Also, uh, one of these items in the list should be selected, so we're going to keep track of the selected item as well. So with that in mind, we have a notion of GUI with three different variants. Let's start writing some code. So in Dr. Racket with hashling plate, we're going to say define type, because we're defining a new type GUI. And for GUI, we said we had three different variants. There's the label variant, there is the button variant, and the choice variant. In the label variant, we have just one thing. It's got some text, which we can represent as a string. In the case of a button, it's got some text, which we can represent as a string, uh, but it also has an uh, enabled state. We can use a boolean to say true or false, whether it's enabled. For our choice, we have items, which we can represent with a list of strings. And then we have uh, which item is selected. We can represent that with a number. So zero for the first thing, one for the second thing, and so on. We could also use a string to name the selected one, but this way the, the actual text is only in one place. Now that we've defined this uh, GUI type, the program runs but doesn't do anything, we could write down some example GUIs, like label pick a fruit, or button OK, and let's say it's enabled. And if we run the program now, it'll just say, yes, those are two values. Label pick a fruit, button OK. We could make some more, like choice, uh, list apple banana, where the second one is selected. And um, that's, you know, of type GUI, and it's still that choice. Okay. So that was our data analysis step, independent of what kind of program we're writing that works on GUIs. Well, let's pick a particular program. Uh, with this data definition, with this defined type, let's write a program called readScreen. It's going to take a GUI and give back a list of strings for all the GUI element labels. So we have already done the data analysis part. We're going to have some define readScreen, which will take an argument that's a GUI, and then it's going to, according to the problem statement, return a list of string. Okay, that was our data analysis and setup. Now we're moving on to the examples phase. So at the example step, examples always start open print test. Then it's always the function that you're calling. And then it's an argument to the function. Read screen takes its first argument as a GUI. So we consult our defined type for GUI and we see that we have three choices, label, button, or choice. I'm going to pick the first one, label. In fact, I've already got a label sitting here, so let's just use that. And that's the only argument to read screen. And then read screen, uh, we, our example says what read screen should produce. So in this case, if our GUI is just a label and we return all of the text in the GUI, then it's just going to be that label. That label's text. We don't have enough tests yet, enough examples yet, because, of course, we had a choice here. We had three different choices, and we've only tried the first one. Let's try the second one. So test 
read screen of a button, which I have handy here. Right? If the only thing in our GUI is the button OK, and we read all the texts, that'll just be the string OK. Finally, we should try a test of read screen and the last option, choice here. Choice wants a list of string for the items, so something like apple, banana, coconut. And choice has a second item, which is a selected one. Let's say that apple was selected. If our GUI consists of just those choices, then we re when we read all the text, we see all of those choices. There we have it. We have three examples, at least, because we have three cases. Uh, we don't have a Boolean or something where we can easily classify the results, so there's no reason to think we need more tests than this. Um, that's at least a minimal number, and we'll go with that. With these examples in place, we move on to the template step. The template step uh, for read screen is driven by GUI. G GUI is the type of, of the argument G. So that means we need a type case GUI G with three cases, a label case, where we have some text for the label, a button case, where we have text and whether it's enabled, and a choice case, where we have a list of items and a selected item. In each of these cases, we have some data to work with. So in the label case, we've got just T. In the button case, we've got T and E. Those are just strings and booleans, so there's no other functions to call on those. Toys has a list of strings as items, and it's got a selected item, which is a number. A number, there's nothing more to do with at the template phase, but this, this I here, stands for items. It is a list of string. So in principle, we need another function, read list, that works on the list of strings. And we would follow the same, um, the same process the template process for a list of string. But we've already written the template for a list, and it's going to turn out that we won't need this function, so I'm going to skip that step for now. In any case, um, whether or not we need it, the template requires that it's there. This is the complete template for a function that consumes a GUI. It, uh, it's almost certainly going to dispatch on the type case. It's almost certainly going to use T or T and E or read list of I and S, no matter what the function ends up doing. With that completed template, we move on to implementing the body. That's where we think about what read screen does and pay attention to the examples. So we can go case by case. If we're in the label case, we've got an example to demonstrate that. In this case, label pick a fruit, pick a fruit will be what T stands for. And what we're trying to do is return a list containing that particular label. So we can just say list of T is our result. In the button case, OK is going to correspond to T, and this true here corresponds to E question mark. What we're trying to give back is just a list of OK. That's, again, just a list of T. OK. In the last case, we've got choice. List apple, banana, coconut is what I corresponds to. S corresponds to 0. What we're trying to get back is that same list that is I. So that's why it turns out we don't need read list, and we don't even need S. We just need I. We can try this out. Now is the last step, our test step, and all of our tests pass, which is unsurprising when we follow the recipe. Notice that in this case, the template gave us a lot of extra pieces that we didn't need, right? But that's the template's job, is to suggest all of the things that you might need, and then the body step is where you figure out what you actually need and how to put those pieces together.